the highest performers I've ever been around in basketball or business, they're crystal clear on their North Star of what they're trying to achieve, but they don't sit around wishing, hoping, and dreaming of it. They actually shift their focus to the process, to what's right in front of them. You know, if they say my goal is to sell 100 homes in 2024, they don't sit around worrying about the 100. They focus on what can I do today to inch me closer to selling house number one? You know, what can I do this quarter? What can I do this month? What can I do this week? What can I do today that gets me a little bit closer to my goal? And they understand and have the discipline to know that if every day they focus on incrementally, progressively, and systematically moving forward, then it's not a matter of if they'll hit their goal, it's gonna be a matter of when. So one of the things that's important for all of us is to continue to stretch and leave our comfort zone, but still make sure that we put ourselves in positions to be successful. You know, I, I started my career giving free talks, doing lunch and learns for 15 people, you know, in a break room. But, but you need to do that because once I could see that I could captivate those 15 people's attention during lunch, then I could slowly incrementally earn my way onto bigger stages. So we need to put ourselves in that position. If you're a brand new real estate agent, the chance of someone hiring you to list their $10 million mansion is probably lower, but that doesn't mean that you won't get there. Earn your stripes on, you know, smaller condos and townhouses and, and homes that cost $150,000 and see yourself be able to over deliver in value. And then you will earn your way kind of up that ladder. Confidence also comes, uh, and, and our mutual friend Ed Milet talks about this a lot, in our ability to keep our word to ourselves. If, if I tell myself that tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up at 6 and go work out, if I wake up at 6 and I go work out, my confidence slowly increases because I kept that word to myself. If I wake up and I hit the snooze and I pull the covers over my head and I skip the workout, unconsciously my confidence starts to erode because I basically feel like I lied to myself. So we need to be honest with ourselves and we need to set ambitious goals and have drive, but we need to work really hard to keep our word. See, one of the mistakes a lot of people make is when they're feeling self-doubt or imposter syndrome, then they start to stack on the shame and the guilt. They start to become very critical and judgmental and that actually weighs you down even further and makes it worse. When the best thing you can do is to say, yeah, I'm having a little hesitancy. I'm having a little self-doubt. I feel a little imposter syndrome. I don't know that I belong on this stage. And you know what? that's okay. This means I'm human. It's okay to have these feelings. I believe in my ability to overcome this very natural tendency of self-doubt and imposter syndrome. So high performers, they don't let those feelings paralyze them. Instead, they allow themselves the space and grace to say, yeah, I'm human. I'm going to have some of these feelings and I'm going to push through the discomfort anyway. And I'm going to earn my right to work through the self-doubt and the imposter syndrome. So we have to talk to ourselves in the manner that we would talk to a good friend. So the first thing we need is the ability to refocus. And that will start with awareness. And for anyone watching or listening right now, if you are taking notes, write this down, highlight it and underline it. And that is awareness is always the first step to improvement in every area of our life, because you will never improve something you're unaware of and you will never fix something that you're oblivious to. So the first step to improving our ability to focus is having an awareness of when we are unfocused. It's having a conscious awareness of when is my mind wandering? When, when am I distracted? When am I spending an hour going down a, a YouTube or Facebook rabbit hole when I'm supposed to be finishing up a manuscript or I'm supposed to be typing up an email proposal to a client? So we have to have an awareness. And then once we have an awareness, then we can start to slowly dial it back in. And, and the acronym that I use for, for what we should be focused on, I heard this from Lou Holtz, the Hall of Fame football coach at Notre Dame. Uh, and his acronym was WIN, W-I-N, and it stands for what's important now. I'm a big believer that at any given moment of any given day, each and every one of us should be able to take a deep breath and ask ourselves, am I choosing to place my attention in what I believe is most important in this moment? We don't have any control over the economy, over interest rates, over the political landscape. We don't control that stuff. Now, it does have an effect on your business if you're in the real estate world. So I'm not saying that it's not important and I'm not saying that it's not valid. What I'm saying is you don't have any control over it. And it's been my experience that if we put the vast majority of our energy, our time and our focus into the things we do control, we have more control over our destiny instead of worrying about the things that we don't have control over. And I'm of the belief there's only two things we have 100% control over 100% of the time. And that is our own effort 
in our own attitude. If you set the goal of selling 100 homes in one year, well, you have to sell home number one first, and then you have to sell number home, the home number two. So don't worry about the 100. Focus on what are the basics that I need to focus on, the process steps to sell home number one. And then as soon as that's been sold, then I move to the next play. What do I need to do now to sell home number two? And when you can be very process oriented and learn to respect the work and the steps, then you're gonna greatly increase your chance that those things will happen.